CJ. So CJ is a friend, excuse me. Our producer CJ is also a fan of Sam Tripoli. I am not a regular listener of the Tinfoil Hat podcast that he hosts. I've been a guest. I've got some great clips from it. I'm a regular fan of his stand-up. And I actually have a Pandora station on my phone set to Sam Tripoli Radio. And uh, great dude. I, I've, I've gotten to do a debate with him in person in L.A. Uh, it, it, you know, he's a great guy. And, I, you know, I, I consider him a friend of mine, trying to get him to come out here and visit us at the Garden of Freedom. But, CJ, you're a regular listener of the Tinfoil Hat podcast, correct? Yeah, actually, I have made a hat that is out of tinfoil. <laughs> I listen to everything that they put out, uh, uh, minus the daily doses. I've been busy doing this while they're busy doing that. So occasionally I'll catch some of that. But, uh, no, the main podcast and what they've done with their evolution and from, like, start to finish, I've been watching. And I, I guess you could say I'm a fan for sure, a fanboy nonetheless. <laughs> All right. And you caught a clip of Sam talking about the Libertarian Party and movement the other day that, that I think deserves some response. Why don't you roll that tape, please? It's so interesting because, like, once again, the Libertarian Party is focusing on uh, one-payer health care with the notion that if the government comes in, and when I talk about libertarian, I am talking about the leadership, not the base. The base is just like most groups probably wants love and respect and everybody. It's these, ba it's these leaders of all these parties that are completely corrupt, taking all the money, being blackmailed into what they're doing. And we, you know, so the Libertarian Party has focused on health care and, and everybody, you know, wanting to have, a, you know, one payer, which I say, go look at the VA and find out how that works out. Uh, but we need a, a, a free, a free market, meaning I need, we need to have people competing for your business, but we don't have that. But they focus on that and they don't focus on the fact that why can't a company Get off the ground that is trying to be a social media like like bitch you gab and even though I don't necessarily agree with everything that the, the the guy who owns gab and his thoughts are but why can why are the numbers on there so low and why are you trying to tell me that you know uh YouTube ESPN's uh you know first take getting 10 million views when they can't even get a like more than a couple hundred thousand people to watch it on television where you just got to turn it on and like why isn't the libertarian party going off on that why are they only going off on medicare medicare and, and, and health care that the rich pigs make all their money off of what are your thoughts on that and i'm just well, why am i yelling at you <laughs> uh, oh, hold on hold on i'm sorry sorry go ahead <laughs> It's okay, Sam. You have plenty of reason to be angry right now. I, although I, I, I don't think you're yelling at me personally, obviously. Now, first of all, this focusing on single payer. You know, it is important for us as libertarians. I think most libertarians go, you know, hey, we, we really need to oppose further socialization of medicine. And going to single payer would be a problem. But I don't even hear... Like, I don't know who he's referring to. I mean, is, is you know, our, our presidential candidates, uh, no. Dr. Joe Jorgensen and, and Spike Cohen, are they, you know, folks? I don't, I don't think so. And certainly not in, inappropriately so. Now, sidebar on this, even as a libertarian, you know, when, we, when I, I can look at things realistically because people try to compare, well, look at this country. They have single payer and they have better health out outcomes than in the United States. And it's true. If you're going to have socialized medicine, make it efficient, right? And single payer is better than corporate socialized medicine like we have today. A truly voluntary system, would, which would not be entirely cutthroat free market, right? Because the market demands also ways of insurance and pooling risk and lots of charity and community-based health and helping people out. And we would be funding those things more effectively, more efficiently with a purely, at least market principle based system that says those things have to be founded voluntarily. But Sam's point is that the leadership of the libertarian movement and parties 
are talking about this too much. Now, he did point out, and I'm with him on the conspiracy here because I've, I've, I've seen enough of the, the, you know, the, the blanket over the elephant in the corner of the room to go, oh, yeah, there's blackmail, there's manipulation, there's threats. But it's not to like change the messaging to talk about single payer healthcare more than you know the, the underlying business competition issues that he want, would rather us talk about. And I I agree with him fundamentally on this. We should be talking about that more and more than the single payer thing. Sam might be looking at certain things in the politicized realm where people want to talk about issues that respond to voters based on surveys and seeing you know and, and, and they go well. Uh, if voters care about health care, what's the libertarian position on health care in terms of immediate political issues? Well, libertarians oppose single payer, so they, you know, it, you know, maybe there's some corruption saying let's focus on issues where we align with conservatives because it's easier for the mainstream to diminish libertarians as being a type of right winger or part of the Republican Party. And to be fair, as much as I love Dr. Ron Paul, he did set us up. And I don't think that there's no criticism of him at all, but it's a consequence of his very successful strategy was the affiliation of libertarians with, with the right when really we are neither left nor right at all. So there, there might be some manipulation there if you're looking at like, I don't know, Cato Institute policy papers or what Rand Paul is talking about or, you know, what who knows what other doing? Yeah, sure. Like if you if you look at that, you might you know you might see certain things that would give you this uh, uh, false impression. And one of the things I that he said that it kind of rubbed me the wrong way is like the leaders. And I go, there aren't really any leaders, you know. And, and you have to be more precise, Sam, and say, well, certain prominent libertarians, and 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 that might get you to more what we're talking about or what what you're sort of what you're what you're trying to say here. But, you know, don't focus on business competition like we do focus on business competition. I, we talk about that every single day in the show. And, may, you know, the other thing about what Sam says is, is the base. It's kind of interesting to look at the libertarian movement as like any other movement. There are leaders and there are followers and volunteers and activists and people of different degrees of, of involvement. But there's one key thing that differentiates us in being a kind of leaderless movement and that it really is baked into the message of libertarianism when we say you own yourself. That means you lead yourself. You can follow, you lead yourself to follow somebody, but it's by your choice. You have that fundamental sovereignty and free will respected and inherent in your humanity recognized by libertarianism and celebrated and promoted by it. So, CJ, anything else that you, that you wanted to point out about Sam's comments? Well, okay, so uh, the reason why I bring this up is because, one, I've ran, ran for office and I'm currently running for office uh, with the Libertarian Party. You have ran for president for the Libertarian Party. And so to hear him go, and I love Sam Tripoli, make no mistake about it, uh, but to hear him just pull our party out and then go, you know, this is what the LNC, I, I have a, 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 a you, you, we got you here, Adam, saying, well, there's COINTEL Pro and teaching us about that and learning about that subject, and then there's him over here saying the LNC is, is doing this and focusing in this way, and I'm, and I'm watching this going like, man, it sounds like it's just as corrupt as the DNC and the RNC. And how do we explain this to people when I don't think that he's right when we say we focus on one issue that is controlled by all of us? And I mean, right. for example, this morning I went through the I got a letter from the libertarian side that wants to abolish the abortion blank. And we went through this whole article this morning. There's a whole ton of issues that we as libertarians address with. So I, I just felt like boxing us in like that was, was the incorrect way to, to uh, say, and I think he's separating that from the base that just wants to be loved. But where I'm saying is, is that this is kind of something that I think that he could, I mean, he could have taken it a hundred different ways. And it's for me, it was like, why go after the libertarian party that way? But if it is the LNC, and, and you see what they're doing with coronavirus, and you see what they're doing in response to this, and you see that everybody's questioning, I have a non-refundable plane ticket, 
I have a non-refundable uh, uh, Airbnb for Orlando. We have people that have already booked the same. This was the will of the delegates. And you see just this morning, the LNC, they're signed to, to disregard the vote of the delegates and just cancel the whole event through manipulation by not doing the proper contract with the place it was originally scheduled. Now they got to move it. And I'm watching all this stuff and I'm going, what if you're both right? And that's where I'm trying to say, like, what if you're both right? And then we as delegates have to show up in Orlando, whether that's in a public square or, or that's in a fancy dancy, re or, you know, resort. Um, I, I'm all for showing up in the public square. And, and, and taking away the control that these people are putting us in, boxing us in, they're forcing internet government onto us through the Libertarian Party is my guess. But it, I mean, I, so to hear it coming from both people, I listen to this show obviously every day, I listen to the, every episode of, of Tinfoil Hat, and it just makes me go, man, our party, like we got some cleaning to do, and, and I don't really know what the solution is other than to show up in Orlando with, with a guillotine, short of a guillotine. <laughs> no, no, CJ. <laughs> I mean, I'm just there, saying, like, I the do... way you guys talk, I'm like, do we need a guillotine? No, but I do know the answer, CJ. And I told Sam that I would support him being a delegate to National, and and he didn't get involved, you know? And th when I say there are a lot of people in the movement with different levels of involvement, he represents one element, one demographic there of, Comedian media producers who are very smart and talented and, and passionate, but looking at the political stuff somewhat detached. And I want to get him to step in just a little bit more and show him that there's not a single complaint about the Libertarian Party that wouldn't be solved by the complainer showing up and doing something about it. Even if you didn't like the presidential nominee, one person can make a huge difference in that campaign. And it's about the long term building the movement and building the party. And it's 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 going to feel like a struggle at times, butting up against the, that corruption, banging your head against the wall. It's going to be it's going to feel like a slog. It's going to feel like a grind. It's going to feel hopeless. But only if you don't remember why you're doing it. So let's get Sam on here and remind him why he cares about freedom. I think and Jim put see this if we can get a co get a commitment from him to be a delegate to the Libertarian National Convention in 2024 and to be involved enough in the party between now and then to guarantee himself one of those positions because it's not that hard. So, Sam, if you ever get to watch this, uh, I hope to have you on the show here very soon. <laughs>